Hi, everyone. Joining in, still a little bit early. We'll be waiting till 7.05 to get started. We already have Manas uh, on the panel today, so he's joined us. And uh, yeah, we're waiting for Mr. Amit from ISB also to join us shortly. So give us a few minutes and we'll be getting started in another five to six Yeah, minutes. Amit has joined already. Okay. Cool. Uh, we're just waiting for him. Hi, I'm already here. Hey, Amit. Hi, how are you? Hi. Thank you for joining. My pleasure. All right. Uh, so, Amit, I'm going to pin you for a spotlight for everyone, along with uh, Manas, if I can, as well. And uh, okay, so I think both of you have got the spotlight. Right, it's seven o'clock right now. So, yep, we have a good, good uh, number of students already joined in. Again, as I said, give us three to four minutes more before we get kickstart things. Uh, the format that we have, I think, like, while while we're still waiting and you know waiting for others to join, I know that uh, many of you have already reached out to us. Uh, have a bunch of questions. I think initially we'll have Manas. Uh, you know, uh, lead the panel, introduce uh, Amit as well as, you know, uh, talk a little bit about himself. And then we will have Amit, of course, do much of the talking, address any queries. Let's keep it frank, honest, uh, heart to heart again. That's very important that, you know, I know a lot of you have very personal questions. So if we don't go to extremely personal questions, like, you know, if you don't, I don't expect students to be putting their, or applicants to be putting their whole profiles out here. But if you have any questions where you need to talk a little bit about a profile, please feel free to do that. Certain house rules, please uh, do not unmute yourself until you're asked to. You can always keep posting on the chat room and we will definitely try to take as many questions as possible. Uh, we are here till eight o'clock at least and more depending on Amit's time and Manas's time, but uh, definitely till eight o'clock today, right? So, uh, Let's make sure that we follow certain house rules as we go through the session. Again, I'm Prayash. I'm the founder of Lilac Buds, and uh, we're hosting Amit and Manas today from the ISB perspective. Uh, for the people who are not already on mute, can I request you to go on mute immediately? Um, uh, Shivani, I'm just going to put you on mute, Shivani, right now. And uh, yeah, all right, okay. Super. So, uh, yeah, just another couple of minutes, I think. And yeah, we'll get started then at that point. Mm. Uh, I think we are at 43 participants. Uh, Amit, if you think we can probably get started, more people will keep joining start in. And we can let's start. start. Right. We'll, we'll have a lot of questions to come up with. Take this forward, yeah. yeah. People will keep joining in and uh, as and when they yeah. join in. They, awesome. Uh, okay. Questions. Yep. Super. Yeah, so, that's uh, fine. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. 
Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Manas. I lead the ISB mentorship team here at Lilac Buds. We every year we get a lot of queries about admissions uh, in ISB. So I reached out to Amit, and we decided that we'll uh, we'll host this Ask Me Anything webinar so that you can clarify all your doubts directly from the source in one place. Um, so I myself am an ISB alum. I was I graduated in 2022, and since then I have been mentoring quite a few students regarding their ISB admissions. Uh, I had like the time of my life when I was at ISB. So I, before ISB also, I knew why ISB was so coveted. And when I was at ISB, I realized that it is much more than I even thought of. So, and we we receive a lot of queries regarding starting from admissions to student life and then placements. So all of those questions. Uh, you can ask Amit uh, today. Uh, to give you like a short intro of Lilac Buds, we are one of the premier edtech platforms in the country, uh, and we help students uh, go for their dream MBA and other master's program worldwide. And of course, in India, ISB being the topmost premier destination for MBA, we get a lot of uh, applicants coming in for their ISB admissions queries, right? Uh, to give you a short introduction uh, of Amit before I hand it over to him. Amit is the Associate Director of Admissions and Financial Aid at ISB. He's also the head of PGP Education. So he is the be all end all when it comes to admissions at ISB. Uh, so we thought that we'll get him on this webinar so that you can ask him the question directly. Amit, over to you. Yeah, you're on mute, Amit. Yeah, you'll have to yeah, you're yourself, on mute. Think, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So thanks, Manas, for the intro and the kind words. And welcome, audience, to the, uh, this session. It's a, uh, uh, I look forward to interacting with you in the next hour or so and uh, you know, uh, clearing all the doubts that you might have. So uh, today's session, feel free to ask questions that you have. And you know, uh, I'll be glad to answer them. Just to set the context a bit. Before we take questions, I'll uh, you know uh, talk for a few minutes about what uh, we are, uh, what we stand for. I know you all, all of you have done your research on ISB. You'll know a lot of things, but let me also just give you a brief intro of ISB. So I, ISB was started in the year 2001. And when we were starting out, we did not want to reinvent the wheel, but bring in the world's best in terms of management education right here to the heart of India. And that's when we partnered with Kellogg and Wharton as a founding associate B-Schools. And, uh, you know, uh, over the years, we also partnered with the London Business School, the Fletcher School at the Tufts University, and we also built a research practice from scratch. For any top educational institution in the world, it's not just a knowledge disseminator, but also a knowledge creator. And ISB will lay a lot of stress on research, so much so that now we are ranked number one in the world number one in the country for research and number 52 uh, uh, worldwide for research. Among our other rankings, we are ranked number one in India uh, uh, in the uh, MBA category of the FT Global MBA Rankings 2024. And we've been ranked number one for the past so many years, number five in Asia, number 31 uh, globally uh, for the 2024 batch. And more importantly, we are ranked number one in the world for salary growth of the cohort. That is the incoming salary versus the outgoing salary of the cohort. So our growth of 229% last year, which ranks as number one in this particular parameter uh, uh, worldwide. And we are also among a select few schools worldwide to have the triple crown accreditations. Uh, that is accreditation by all the top three accreditation agencies, ACSB, Equus, and EMBA, which ensures that your credentials as ISB and be recognized worldwide, uh, uh, you know, uh, all over the uh, uh, world. Uh, in terms of the PG program, the PG program at ISB is designed to give its cohort three key advantages. One is to ensure, you know, positive career pivots. Uh, people come to PGP not just to uh, uh, gain get a salary, but also to pivot their careers into areas of their choice and uh, uh, in functions and industries of their choice. So last year, the cohort had 74% of the cohort had an uh, industry shift, 70% of the cohort had a functional shift, shift which showcases our ability to uh, ensure career pivots for our cohort year after uh, year. Second advantage of PGP is to ensure resilient self-development. So you don't come to uh, ISB or PGP just to learn the courses or you know undergo the classroom uh, learning methodologies, of course, which is the primary purpose, but you also learn a lot outside the classrooms and inside the classrooms, the rigorous curriculum that you 
follow. And the curriculum, the campus life, everything is geared towards building character for the uh, uh, among the uh, uh, cohort, be it the honor code or be it the various activities that we on, on campus. And also to help you learn from setbacks and thrive in ambiguity, which are crucial attributes for somebody who wants to succeed or thrive in the industry today. That's the second advantage. The third advantage of the PG program that we offer our, our cohort is to provide game-changing uh, leadership. So our cohort, when they graduate, they do they have an ability to you know immediately impact the surroundings and bring in change at a large level. And over uh, the next few years, as a cohort, people who graduate from ISB, they you know uh, move into positions which are able to bring in large-scale transformation in the industries, organizations, or in their immediate surroundings. So that's a kind of uh, you know. Uh, uh, learnings we're able to give through our cutting edge curriculum or the faculty which delivers that curriculum to our, to our uh, uh, cohort and the waste activities on campus activities back uh, uh, be it the student life or other other activities that we have for the students. Now quickly some key advantages. So we have a portfolio model of visiting faculty at ISD which ensures that you get to learn from faculty all across the world. So although we have 70 plus teaching research faculty members across the two campuses who you know teach a contemporary curriculum and engage in uh, industry-focused research across our various research centers and centers of excellence. But we also have a pool of 200 plus visiting faculty from top global universities and these schools worldwide. There are 56 as of the last count. And they, you know, come to ISD for a complete term and teach a complete course, ensuring that you get to learn from the world's fac best faculty right here in the heart of uh, uh, the India across our two campuses. In terms of curriculum, so we our curriculum has three basic principles. One is to have a foundational learning journey, which again is customized. So as ISB students in the first few terms, you will undergo core, 10 core courses uh, and also a bucket of four flexi core courses. Now the 10 core courses and the four flexi core courses will enable you to learn uh, uh, about the complete cross-functional aspect of a business. You learn courses like strategy, you learn economics, marketing, statistics, and so on and so forth as part of the foundational learning journey. Next up, you come to the customized learning journey where you take electives. You have you can take between 17 to 20 electives for which you have a choice of 80 plus electives on offer by our faculty members, which will determine what specializations you end up with. And you have free choice to take up any specializations that 10 specializations on offer, six functional and four industry specializations for our students. The third principle is learning to learn. And here we have a lot of exposure to people. Uh, we give a lot of exposure to people in terms of hands-on learning activities, be it the experience learning project. And this year we have come up with the concept of block weeks. There will be four dedicated weeks from the uh, calendar where you will undertake one particular course in that, 20, in, in that particular week. And this course is for 20 hours for one credit and taught by an industry uh, leader who is, you know, well-versed with the topic. For example, we could be talking about uh, uh, people from HUL coming and taking a course called Marketing in Practice. Somebody from the PE world coming and teaching you how to value options, features and derivatives. And you learn from the people who are doing that particular work right in the industry at that point and on masters of that field. So that's one new innovation that we have to our curriculum. Apart from that, we have initiatives for mentorship, uh, learning, and so on and so forth for our cohort at uh, uh, ISB. So that was mm -hmm. our curriculum faculty. In terms of placements, also we have a, a dedicated placement team which ensures that you get career transitions and pivots. Uh, and this placement team is a professional placement team which works out of various cities, in, uh, four cities are currently out of I India and two abroad to ensure that you get companies coming to campus year after year across verticals and functions and to recruit our students at uh, ISB. Uh, so these are the few USPs I wanted to talk about in terms of admissions. So the round one deadline this year is September uh, 15th, 2024. And uh, uh, if you have two years of work experience and as on the date of the deadline, uh, as on the uh, class started, which is 31st of March, 2024. And if you have a valid GMAT and GRE score, you can go ahead and apply right away on our application portal. The application is uh, live. And then there'll be subsequently a uh, uh, round two deadline around first week of December and round three deadline around last uh, week of January. So this is the admission procedure. Now, happy to take a lot of questions on this information that I've provided. Uh, Manas, over to you. 
Yeah, sure, Amit. Uh, just to clarify one thing, I think when you uh, spoke about the work experience, you mentioned 31st March 2024. It's 31st March 2025. Right? I'm sorry. 2025, yeah. That's the one day before the uh, commences. So Last coming time. to that, so we have quite a few queries. Uh, so I will just ask you at least a couple of the the hottest ones that have been like going on in the last couple of days that we have received. First one, of course, is uh, the uncertainty regarding the EO entry option this year. Uh, I think about 20% of the people who have registered for this webinar, they had, they were looking for the EO uh, option. So we wanted to know like what's going on with the EO, is this going to continue or not? Sure. So early entry option or people with less than two years of work experience, we are reworking the EO option for you and we'll come back to you with more information by 12th of August. So I'll urge all the people who are preparing for the early entry uh, uh, option entries, wait till 12th of August. Don't uh, abandon your uh, preparation for GMATs or GREs who continue to prepare. You will have uh, information on the early entry option by 12th of August, 2024. And from there, you can then uh, go ahead and start filling your applications and so on. So Cool. Uh, that's that's quite insightful. Uh, thank you. Uh, one more question that we get quite a lot. Although we know the answer, we give this answer, but I think people would be more reassured if they get it from you. Is there a difference between the first round or the second round, even the third round, when it comes to uh, applying to ISP? So there is absolutely no difference in terms of the evaluation methodology or scholarships. So earlier, uh, th two, three years back, Manas, when I think you joined that time, we had a difference in terms of scholarships. So round one is to get maximum scholarships and then round two and round three, we still have 75% of scholarships. But from last year onwards, even scholarships we have now, we are giving equal scholarships across the three rounds. Even in round three, you have excess 200% scholarships. In terms of evaluation, there's no uh, difference among the three rounds. You can apply in any other round, the uh, thing being uh, when you're prepared. But there's a difference in terms of, you know, the timelines. For example, if you apply in round one, your results will come up in November uh, 19th this year. And if you apply in round two, your results will come out by last week of Jan uh, January. Right. So if you apply, if you get results in round one, you have enough time to integrate into your ISB journey. In, in fact, to uh, plan for your loans, to uh, turn in your resignations to organizations, to meet uh, your batchmates in the city, form those groups and have those learning activities. If you apply in round three, then you get uh, your results just uh, around 20 days or 25 days before the class start date. Right. So that is not ideal, I would say, uh, for a lot of people. Uh, because they might want to give notice space to the organizations. So uh, accordingly, plan your timelines is what I'll suggest to people. Got it, got it. Thanks, Amit. Uh, one more question uh, that we we are getting quite a lot is that as we are... I think I went on good. Yeah. So yeah. as we had mentioned that... Uh, uh, that ISB is not accepting GMAT or GRE online scores this year. So some people had questions if they had appeared in GMAT, let's say online last year or one year prior, right? Since the validity is for five years. So in that, like let's say a couple of years ago when the offline GMAT was not even available. So in that case, will the online score be accepted? No, the online score will not be accepted even if it's uh, you know valid currently. So uh, from this year onwards, uh, no online scores will be accepted either for GMAT or GRE. And what we have done is we have spoken to GMAT and GRE uh, teams, the ETS and the uh, 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 GMAT team. So ETS is currently running a discount uh, and they've been given those, uh, extended those discount to people who are applying to uh, ISB. Uh, you can get, get up to 30% off on the new GRE uh, tests currently. And similarly, GMAT for people who have written online tests earlier and are now wanting to uh, write uh, the uh, in-person test after the announcement the ETS, the GMAT team will also give them a discount on the uh, test. So you can avail of those offers, but absolutely we will not be accepting any online tests uh, from, for this year, uh, from this year onwards. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Um, if someone has any questions, you can first raise your hands and I can, probably call on you based on uh, uh, on the order. And you can also put your questions on the chat. I have received a couple of questions uh, via direct message instead of direct message. If you can just put it on the chat, then I think Preyash and uh, uh, Lalakbat's team can curate it and you know, give it to us. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll do the curating. Thanks, Manas. I'll help you with that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Bill. Yeah, Ashish, I think you raised your hand. There is a there is an option of raising your hand directly on the uh, on the Zoom app. Uh, Ashish Khanna. Yeah. You can Hi. probably uh, unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, yes. yep, we can hear you. This is Ashish here. So uh, my question was uh, for GMAT online only. So I had uh, written GMAT back in 2021. So initially mm -hmm. I had booked offline exam, but mm -hmm. the centers were shut across the country. Mm -hmm. And basically I got a cancellation like a day before my exam. And I was mm -hmm. sort of forced to give uh, GMAT online at that point. Mm -hmm. Uh, so is there any particular um, time during COVID or something like that where these courses will be considered? Because honestly, it's quite difficult as a working professional, especially at this stage with five and six years of experience to again, take a few months off and again, start preparing for GMAT, especially with the revised uh, format of the exam. So is there any consideration like that? Because we were really forced to, uh, you know, uh, give the exam in that particular way, even if we did not want to. I totally understand and acknowledge your concerns. But the thing is that, you know, there'll be a lot of other sub uh, categories of people who for one reason or other uh, would have had to write the online tests. So it will be very difficult to, you know, uh, allow one particular category or, or group of people and not allow another group of people. That defeats the whole purpose of the decision that we have taken. So we have been considering uh, not uh, having online schools for a while here. And we choose to do it from this year onwards as a cutoff. So you could have done it last year also. And there will always be some people, uh, you know, who might have uh, been at the wrong end of the decision. But that's something which we have to take at uh, this point. And I'll suggest that, you know, uh, reattempt uh, uh, the test in a test center mode. We have enough time uh, till 26th of January. There are three rounds and there's no difference in terms of the evaluation of the three rounds at ISB. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Amit. Uh, Avina, you can probably go ahead with your question. Hi, sir. Uh, I'm Avina. Uh, I have uh, close to eight years of experience uh, in financial services industry. So someone like me with uh, an experience of eight, eight odd years, so, uh, I mean, would it be appropriate for us uh, with that sort of experience uh, to actually um, uh, look at ISB or apply for it like because uh, the average experience over there is like four to five years so ju just uh, wanted yeah. your comment sure so you know even though the average experience at ISB is four to five years but the look at the bad sizes at ISB it's 800 people right and in terms of people with eight plus years of work experience I'm not even talking eight exactly eight plus years of work experience the number stands around 70 to 20 percent every year so every year around 100 to 120 people are eight plus years of work experience at ISB, which is almost equivalent to, you know, classes of some other uh, B schools uh, in the country or uh, uh, abroad. So it's perfectly fine for people with eight plus years uh, experience to apply to ISB. In fact, eight is not that high also. In, we have had people with 11, 12, 14, 22 years of work experience also in the class. And for eight years of work experience and above, we have something called a senior executives club, where the placement team will work very closely with you to help you get customized offers, keeping in your mind your prior work experience. So that is perfectly fine. You can apply with eight years of work experience, not at all an issue. Yeah, Amit, okay. uh, if I can add to that, uh, yeah. I myself had eight years of experience when I joined ISB. And uh, there were plenty of people who had 12, 15. In my batch, there were people with 21 years of experience also. If you have uh, experience on the higher side, you are also going to get placements in accordance with that, right? So it's not like the entire batch uh, gets placed around the same CTC, around the same industry profile. Nothing, there is nothing like that. It will, your experience will only help you. It's not going to be a deterrent. Okay, uh, sure. Thank you. Next. I think Kashish, you can go ahead and ask your question. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Amit. Hi, so I have a question regarding the GMAT focus edition score. So I know, I know ISB writes that, uh, that the score is not any minimum score that you guys keep, but like what are the chance? Like what is the minimum score? Like the chances of getting you know into ISB will increase. Like what is the minimum score that ISB requires under under the focus edition that has started? So there is no uh, minimum score as you mentioned. So I can give mm -hmm. you the range last year. Last year we had very mm -hmm. few focus scores because you know yeah. uh, 
classical was still in play. So range of classical scores last year was 610 to 780, right? Okay. So somebody with 610 hmm. also got into the class. Now what you're keep and 610 would correspond to what? I, I think around 75 percentile. Uh, I'm not sure right now, but around uh, 80 to 75 to 80 percentile is what will correspond. Yes. Yeah, right? yeah. Now, with somebody who gets a lesser GMAT, who has a lesser GMAT score, you look, your hmm. other five parameters have to be strong. And what are the other okay. parameters we look at? We look at your uh, uh, hmm. CADs, work history, your essays, and uh, any other activities or so on and so forth, right? So if you have other profile right. parameters strong, there's no reason why you can't make it with a lower score. And again, uh, uh, vice versa, if your other profile parameters are weaker, let's say your CADs are on the lower side, you can go back and change your CADs, but you can always compensate it with a higher GMAT score or more clarity in your essays or uh, decent quality work experience. So it's a, all about balancing your profile. So I cannot say right. that, you know, for a particular per person, 610 should be enough or not, or six unless I know the complete parameters and profile of the candidate. Got it. Got it. So for example, the GMAT, uh, the uh, GMAT that uh, GMAT has released, like, you know, they have uh, got equivalent scores. For example, 645 is a 90th percentile this time. So yes. like, uh, similarly, you are also comparing, right? The 710 is equivalent we, to 645, yeah. right? So we always looked at percentiles. Scores are always huh. a proxy for percentiles, right? So even we, mm -hmm. now we do the same. So uh, look okay. at percentiles. If you are look around 90 to 92 percentile, you are around the median mark is what I'll suggest. Got it. Uh, I have another question. So uh, regarding like when uh, when is the last date that we can give our GMAT like for the first round only? So if September. we give like 10, if you we... Can give uh, it if on we... the 15th also. You can give it on the 15th oh. and enter your uh -huh. unofficial scores which you see on the screen or maybe uh, enter dummy scores and uh, upload the proof of test taken for on 15th. And we'll consider you in round one. And your score should reach us within next uh, uh, two to uh, 20 days. Uh, two, mm -hmm. two, two weeks to 20 days. And if not, we'll push you into round two. Oh, got it. So we can give on that day, that day also and submit that the day form. Also. Yes. Okay, that's, yes. that's good. Uh, I have just one last question as well. So regarding the essays, the questions have changed this time. So I just wanted to know, like, what exactly, you know, as we are looking for essays and if you could also describe, like, what is the purpose of changing it and what you are looking, what ISB is looking for in those essays? So essays, uh, we, uh, you know, usually ch keep changing them on regular intervals. And mm -hmm. if you look at the essays, even this year and last year, both the essays are personal in nature, right? So mm -hmm. they talk right. about your experiences that you bring in and, you know, about your uniqueness and thoughts. So that's what we're looking at in essays. Self-awareness of the candidate, their experiences and so on and so forth. The third essay, which is on your career goals, is not mandatory. It's optional. So there we are mm -hmm. fine if you don't have a, a concrete goal right now. It's perfectly okay mm -hmm. as long as you have a broad idea of what you are looking at from ISB and what you are aware of your skill sets and so on and so forth. So essays are both mm -hmm. personal and that's, uh, you know, we'll keep tweaking them year on year to ensure that we get the best uh, out of candidates and uh, uh, in terms of their thoughts and uniqueness and which can also be discussed in the interviews with the candidates. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. If, uh, I mean, if I can add something here, yeah. so as a mentor also, what we tend to see is that the law, most of the people that apply to ISB are quite, quite, you know, qualified in their profile to their academic and professional backgrounds. Right. So, uh, your essays, are uh, your weapon that helps you kind of stand out from the rest of the crowd. I think that's why your essays need to be personalized. I think that is, I think Amit can clarify on this a bit. I think that is why ISB is also going for more personal essays because ISB also wants to know what you are made of, right? What kind of a person you are. Because from a career professional point of view, all of, all of the people who apply to ISB are quite accomplished. So they have like engineering background they are analysts mm -hmm. and stuff, right from uh, consulting background so what differentiates is is kind of their own personal strengths and weaknesses their successes and failures right so that's why your essays your application kind of needs to stand out as to um, what makes you unique out of all those thousands of people that apply to ISV. Exactly. Got it. So there, there is an optional essay also, right? That uh, is there, like there's an option to whether write it or not. So like, is there any preference if a person writes it, then they have a higher chance or if a person doesn't, then they have a lower chance? So there's no preference as such uh, in terms of chances. But if you write yeah. something, then be prepared to talk about it in the interview. 
Now, why yeah. is that SCA optional? You know, it's a career goals SCA. We're looking at what goals you have, right? If somebody is very clear that this is what I want to do, I mm -hmm. am currently doing this. These are my skill sets. I'll do an MBA from ISB, then move on to XYZ companies or XYZ roles in uh, this particular sector. Then perfectly mm -hmm. fine, right? Yeah. But it's fine if you don't have a goal also because a lot of times people come to ISB, they take the core courses, they realize this is where my strength lies and this is what I want to do eventually after taking those courses. That also is okay, right? So if you have awesome. clarity on your goals, go ahead and write that essay. If you don't have, that also is fine as long as you have a broad idea of what you want to do again out of ISB experience. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I think Vishesh, Dargan, I think you can go ahead with your question. Hi, I am at Manus. Thanks for letting me speak. So essentially, I, I'll circle back to the question that the previous respondent had asked about the personal and professional mix of essays. So I had read around quite a few blogs where, you know, they had mentioned that you don't need to be, you need to elaborate your professional strengths and experiences while you are, you know, writing your essays and you do not really need to be a lot person. So it, it kind of got me an ambiguous answer to, you know, what exactly write it in, in an essay. So, of course, you you can write about your experience, you can write about your college life. But I was just not very clear about, you know, in which direction to pursue in. If you can help me out with that, that would be really helpful. And uh, another follow-up question with that itself was that if... A particular person has identified his or her. Can everyone please mute yourself? Whoever is not talking, please. I'll just I'll just do the mute video. Amit, I'll, yeah, I'll I'll sorry, Vishesh, you can continue. Yeah, Vishesh, you please continue. I think then I can continue. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Vishesh, so please I, go ahead. Yeah. I think I got the first part of your question, yeah, yeah. which is. Should the yeah. essays be personal or professional uh, uh, or a mix of both? See, it's totally up to you. As I mentioned earlier, the two essays that we talk about, we are looking at your particular unique characteristics, your strengths, weaknesses, and your experiences that you bring to the table. It could be professional. You could have gained them from a professional setting or it could be personal setting. Perfectly fine. There's no uh, hard and fast rule that it has to be professional or personal. Anything is fine in that. Uh, Basically, what we intend to look at is what kind of experiences you're talking about, uh, you know, your understanding of uh, yourself, self-awareness and maturity of your experiences, right? So that ma matters more, uh, whether it's professional or personal, it's that, that is irre irre irrelevant. Uh, the professional essay is more the third essay, which is purely professional in terms of your goals, your skill sets that you have acquired right now, that you can attempt if you want to, if only that also is fine. Understood, understood. I think that clears out a lot of things. Uh, another question which I had regarding the third essay itself. So, so for example, a particular candidate has identified his or her skill that he wants to pursue. For example, a particular person does have consulting and product management product management experience, but he has decided that he wants to go into product management itself. So, writing that in an essay that I would like to work in a company, uh, you know, product management company post my ISB dream. Does that solidify a particular candidate's position or, you know, does ISB, ISB look for a candidate who is more open-minded and, you know, open to things like that? No, it's perfectly fine if you mention that I want to be a product manager or a consultant or uh, finance professional, whatever. But if you mention that, be prepared uh, with the various paths, various uh, initiatives that you have done in that uh, uh, particular uh, direction. Also, awareness of what those roles entail, uh, awareness of what kind of companies come and recruit at ISB. It's very important if you mention something clearly to do a lot of research and talk about it because then you'll get questions around that particular uh, thing. So if you're comfortable doing that, go ahead and mention that perfectly fine. Understood. Thanks, Amit. Thanks, Panas. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sagar Parikh, I think you can go ahead with your question. Hi, Amit. Hi. Thanks for addressing us. So I wanted to ask, what's the benchmark for a scholarship at ISB? Is there any benchmark? So uh, in terms of scholarships, we offer two types, primarily merit scholarship, merit come needs scholarship. And merit scholarship, everybody by default is eligible. 
and here the criteria is your performance in the ISB selection process. It includes various, various criteria like your uh, academic scores, under uh, uh, your work history, your GMAT, GRE, your essays, your interview scores and so on and so forth. Higher up in the packing order you are, more the chances of scholarship uh, for you. And here we offer up to 100% of tuition fee waivers. Uh, the tuition fee is around 25.5 lakhs per annum and you can get up to 25.5 lakhs up to uh, scholarships uh, as part of the merit scholarships and minimum starts from 8.5 lakhs uh, for uh, under merit scholarship. Similarly, there's a might come need scholarship. The only difference here is the candidate's annual family income should be less than uh, 18 lakhs per annum. If that's the case, then you, you can apply for the might come need scholarship. And here also we give tuition fee waivers up to 25 lakhs under this particular category. So, and then there are a lot of other uh, scholarships named after uh, our LMs or uh, professors and, uh, you know, uh, industry donors and so on and so forth, which you can, uh, which can be uh, considered for and will be granted with either prior to application or post uh, application. And uh, in uh, all last year, we dispersed around 20 crores worth of scholarships to a PGP cohort uh, and around 22% of our cohort had some sort of a scholarship or other at ISB last year. Okay, got it. Uh, one other question. I just lost my internet there. What's the uh, percentile range that you mentioned for ISB admissions? So for the classical admissions, last year's range, people who are in the class was 610 to 780. Okay. So that would be similar to what uh, we can see in uh, this the edition. Focus focus edition. Yes. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move to Krivi Arora. Yeah. yeah um, good evening, Amit. Uh, good well, evening. I have a very different question from what everybody's asked right now. Uh, I need to know, are there any courses available for MBBS graduates in ISB? And so, uh, what is the way of admission? So, uh, in fact, uh, you can do the PG program at ISB. And every year, we have quite a few doctors, dentists, and people from the healthcare field who are part of the PGP uh, cohort. I'm sure minus your batch also will have at least five to six doctors. Or, we uh, have uh, doctors, dentists, actors, Ranji Trophy cricketers, actors. like <laughs> yeah, people yeah. from all backgrounds. Yeah. yeah. So a okay. lot of doctors do the PGP program and they have a well-defined career path. They might want to move into a healthcare section, a healthcare industry. A uh, lot of companies come to hire from there, administration and, and, and so on and so forth. So that's one mm -hmm. career option. If you're looking for right. short-term courses, then we have advanced uh, pro management programs in healthcare as well. In fact, in the Mohali campus, we have uh, something called uh, Max Institute of Healthcare. Uh, it's Max Institute of Healthcare. Eh? So uh, there you can, uh, uh, we do a lot of research uh, uh, in the areas of healthcare. And we also offer courses to professionals, uh, medical or paramedical or even other prof industry professionals in the uh, area of management. So you can look at that also if you're not inclined to PGP, but you as doctors, a lot of doctors do that with a PGP program every year. And that could be an option for you as well. Okay. And the, is there any course uh, related to pharmaceutical marketing or pharmaceutical management? So uh, uh, not so niche courses, but okay. uh, we're... Uh, you'll have general management uh, programs th there and there could be certain programs in the executive education side you might want to go and look up there uh, which are niche towards healthcare per se but not pharma alone not pharma uh, not pharma alone i'm not sure uh, uh, there might be short term courses custom courses open courses you can look up uh, on the executive education website of isb uh, but again a lot of pharma people also come to isb pgp to complete their one year full time mba program and for doctors, how so, many years of experience is required before they join in? Same, two years of work experience. Two years of work. And is internship counted in that? For doctors, it is counted, yes. For doctors, it's counted. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll uh, take yeah, Shubha's question. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. So I have uh, three okay. questions for you. The first one is like, I have already completed an MBA from a tier two college. And now it's been three years after I completed my MBA. I'm currently in IT consulting as a business analyst. So can I apply for ISB? Will ISB encourage the second MBA? Is there already people doing second MBAs? So how does lots. that work? I mean, not a lot, but quite a few people doing okay. second MBAs. Uh, should not be a problem at all. Uh, showcase your MBA and then in the application also mentioned uh, your need to do a second MBA and uh, it, those could be very, very valid reasons. So no issues at all. I don't think that should be an issue. 
And is there any uh, change for me in the application process or that remains oh. the same? Remains the same. So showcase your second MBA as a master's degree and uh, uh, proceed uh, 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 accordingly. Okay, okay, great. So then my second question is, uh, in terms of the work experience, will the impact of the work experience towards the society, does it matter? Like, let us say I have a three years yes. work experience, which is very impactful, uh, which is compared to an another guy who has an eight years experience. So in, mm. in the eyes of the admission committee, how is that uh, view? Definitely. We look at progression and progression includes something called impact, as you mentioned. So if your uh, if your work experience is really impactful, you'll get more points in that particular section compared to somebody else whose work experience is not that impactful. Okay, okay, right. And the last question from my end is, uh, let us say my profile has like uh, uh, no additions in the area of an extra, uh, extracurricular activity. Let us say apart from academics and the work, I don't have anything. Is that a negative or I can compensate that in my academics and uh, other GMAT scores and I can still be a part of ISP? You give the answer yourself. You can compensate it with other things. Uh, extracurricular is not all that uh, impactful, all that uh, uh, necessary. Okay, right. Thank you. Unless it is like a national level or international level. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Manav, I think we can, before we go ahead, I have uh, posted a link to uh, a Google form. So anyone who doesn't get their question answered, you can just submit your questions and we can answer your questions later on also. I can send up a follow-up email or something, right? Yeah, Manav, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, thanks, Manas. Hi, Amit. Hi. Uh, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, get some more clarification and touch base again on the new GMAT Focus Edition, uh, you know, the ra the range. Uh, I don't want to, you know, I, I understand that we don't touch base on the minimum score requirement. So uh, I believe the current batch has sort of a, uh, a range of about 645 to maybe 745 or so. So I just wanted to understand if, you know, uh, considering that the incoming batch of 25 is going to be primarily at least, you know, uh, completely GMAT focus edition. So is that range going to be changing or would that be a range that uh, ISB would be targeting for most of the students? Again, as I mentioned, you know, range will, uh, range keeps changing year on year. And last year, the number of focus people uh, were very less in the batch. So hence you see the range, which it is. Uh, more than the scores, I'll always advise candidates to focus on the percentiles. You know, uh, look at the percentiles. So range will definitely change if when more and more people from focus edition start coming to the batch. The range is going to change because then they'll come in, come up with different parameters and other things. So yes, it's going to change. But okay. saying that 645 is going to be the minimum next year, I don't think it's li likely. Okay, sure. And uh, another part, I, you had also mentioned that, you know, academics, uh, which I have known that academics will also play an important role. But I believe ISB, uh, if this, if not last year, this year has made a change that the 10th and 12th grades are also not included. It's just going to be the undergrad uh, uh, or any postgrads that, that have been performed by the candidates. Yes. So, yes. so like, is that actually going to make like too much of a difference? Like, say, you know, if someone has performed well, on their uh, 10th and 12th on a little less on their undergrad like you know how would that differentiating factor be considered so 10th and 12th we're not looking at this year we'll only look at your undergrad scores and in that also there are a lot of different uh, things we look at your degree your uh, institution your university your scores and then we normalize scores across universities and so on and so forth so yes 10th and 12th no undergrad is what we're going to look at Okay, sure. And just one last uh, little question. Uh, so you had also mentioned, uh, you know, uh, actually, I just wanted to clarify this, that the GMAT now, I'm someone who has two years of work experience. So if I join ISB in 2025, I would be having about two and a half years of work experience. So my GMAT score would be tallied with people of my work experience range. Is that correct? No. No, that's not correct. So what okay. will happen is we'll not tally individual GMAT scores or individual work ex of people. We'll look at the profiles of the candidate and each profile will get a profile score, which will co consist of your ACADs, your work experience, your GMAT scores, essays and so on and so forth. And then uh, the profile score of the candidate will be compared with the cutoff for the profile score about which people are going to call, be called for interview. So I'll not, uh, so I will not say that your GMAT score will be compared with if you have lesser work experience, 
then you might want to actually uh, cover up with in other areas, maybe slightly higher GMAT or uh, a CADs and so on and so forth. So that's how it goes. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, Manan, I think you can go ahead with your question. Hello, I'm audible. Yeah, yeah you're audible, Manan. Hi, hi, Amit. Uh, hi, Manas. Uh, thanks for this, first of all. Uh, just uh, wanted to understand, Amit, uh, what do you mean by work X? Like in terms of ISB definition, what do you mean by work X? So work experience is, there are three rules of work experience to be, for it to be counted as full-time work experience. One is, it should be after your undergrad, right? Anything which you okay. do along with your undergrad will not be counted as full-time work experience. Second is, it should be a paid uh, uh, activity. You can't do a pro bono project or, you know, volunteering and call it work experience. Third is, uh, it should not be concurrent with any other full-time activity. So you can't have two full-time work experiences at the same time. Or you can't be pursuing a master's full-time and also pursuing a full-time work experiences. experience. So three key key rules of work experience, uh, you know, full-time, full not concurrent with any other full-time activity and a paid uh, uh, activity, not a pro bono. And now in terms of work experience, also we look at uh, quite a lot of things. How we evaluate work experience is that we look at progression in terms of uh, work. Whether you have worked for five years in an organization, uh, five times uh, one year, or whether you have had a steady progression in your work over the last five years, what in terms of your projects, in terms of your uh, you know uh, exposure, in terms of your maybe uh, 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 achievements, in terms of your uh, uh, salary growth, in terms of your promotions, all those things will showcase progression at work. Understood. Understood. Uh, so just wanted to ask a doubt. I'm a lawyer. Uh, I did my undergrad in 2020 and from 2020 to 2023, I was doing my law degree. Uh, with that, I was working at a couple of law firms, uh, not necessarily internships. They were proper paralegal uh, kind of mm. uh, uh, well-paid jobs that I got. But again, I think it falls into the third bucket that yeah, masters along with your masters and masters is full time, I guess. Uh, the law degree that I was doing on the side will that count? Yeah. So the law degree it was doing on the side was it a part time or was it full time? Uh, I yeah, it was a full time. We had proper college. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. that the attendance so, was a little. Uh, yeah. So your work experience will be part time more. in that case. Yeah. Work experience will be part time. Okay. Okay. Understood. Uh, okay, cool, got it. So uh, after my law course, I completed one year of work. At... Hmm. That would be full time if it's uh before you are. So uh, I think I'll have to wait. Sorry, uh, uh, sorry, I didn't get that. So after your law course, undergrad, if you've done one one year full time work experience between your masters, that will be considered as full time, and then one more year you need to get after your masters. Uh, Amit, I'm so sorry. I think your voice is cracking a lot. Could you repeat once more? Is it cracking for you also, Manas? No, no, no. It's, no, no. it's it fine is... for us. I think uh, it's your network. So I think I think what you can do is you can submit that over clear. the link. Uh, we can yeah. get back to you. I think the answer is very clear. You can just submit over the link and we'll get back to you, right? For Just for the interest of time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just to, before we get to Pranit, I also uh, have one question that none of the applicants have asked, but I keep getting this question is, uh, if I am not uh, abroad, I'm in India, can I still opt for a virtual interview? You can still do that, yes. For various reasons, yes. you can still do that. Yeah, okay. Uh, Pranit, please go ahead with the question. Pranit, if you have a question, so you can PA understand. article ship is not considered as a full time work experience. Uh, yeah, for Ayush call you asked in chat. Yeah, uh, okay. I think then we can move on to Hetri. Yeah, Hetri, yes, please, please go ahead. Hi, Amit. Uh, Hi. So I had two questions. One in regard to us, we need LORs for the submission, right? So is it sort of advisable to take it from your current employer and current manager it, or it could be your ex-employer or maybe, you know, ex-manager kind of thing? It could be either. Either is fine. But a senior mm -hmm. uh, colleague, it could, somebody who is at least one level above you in the organization, 
or in okay. uh, any other previous organization. Okay, so it, it doesn't need to be specifically current employee. No, no, not not necessary. Okay, and another, I had a question in terms of scholarship. So you had mentioned about the need based scholarship that had mm. uh, criteria for family income, right? So the is there a sort of you know timeline since when? the family income would be counted like my father is retiring soon so what would be the timeline if it is seen there so it's, it would be the financial year in which you're applying okay in that financial year what was the family income that is uh, okay so in the first april 31st of march 2025 is what we'll look at okay okay yeah. okay thank you so much uh, uh, i mean just to question clarify that comes in Sorry, Manas, just one second, yeah, yeah. jumping yeah, in. Yeah, sure. uh, a lot of UPSC applicants who have worked with us in the past have always asked us, like, hey, I've got a gap year, was preparing for the UPSC, didn't make it, you know, one year, two years sometimes. How does ISB review such cases? Yeah, so there will be a lot of people with gap years, not just UPSC, a lot of other things also. As long as you can show that gap and show what you've learned from that gap, it's perfectly fine. So we have a lot of people who have got UPSC aspirants and then come to ISB all and get through and do quite well. So it's totally about a candidate, how they showcase their learnings in their one particular year. Because uh, preparing for, for, for UPSC also gives them certain skill sets. Or for that matter, taking a year off to travel the world or you know maybe uh, for any particular reason. As long as you have a reason and you, you're able to explain that or answer that in the interview uh, without being defensive, you should be perfectly good to go. Okay, cool. Kashish, we can take your question. Yeah, uh, Kashish, before going there, I just want to circle back to one of the previous previous doubts about the work experience thing. Amit, I think you can you can correct me if I'm wrong. When you mentioned uh, concurrent work experiences won't count, I think what uh, the one small clarification there is, if, if you have worked in, let's say, two jobs for one year each, that is not going to be counted as two years. But if you have, in total, you have more than two years of experience at the same time, let's say you had a full-time job, but you also started an entrepreneurial venture for, let's say, six months or something, you can still mention that on the application. It won't count as six months extra or something, right? But you can still mention it can yeah. still add value to your application. Yeah, I just wanted exactly. to clarify that small point. Yeah, Exactly, exactly. Thanks, uh, Manus, for yeah. yeah, sure. Uh, Kashish, please go ahead. Yeah, I had a que I had the question regarding LOR. So you mentioned that LORs can be we can get it from your like ex managers also who are not part of the company like now. But I wanted to know like there was this part where it mentioned that after you get admitted, your your managers are called for you know to get uh get to for the background check. So what if the what if that manager at the time when you call, what if that manager is not there, like he's left the company? So will that count? That's okay. See, LOR and background check are two different things. LOR, mm -hmm. we are getting a validation of your skill sets from somebody who has worked professionally from, from you. Background check is simple that whether you were there or not. You mentioned in the application form that I worked there for two years, whether you worked for two years or not, that's all. It's a third party agency that, that, that does that. So if your manager is not there, somebody else will be there who will have the, open the records and say, yeah, we have we had uh, Kashish working here from so much, this state to this state. That's it. That's all we are looking at. And the background, uh, third party background verification people just need a number to go by. And if the person is left, they will find out somebody else to get the data verified. So two different things. LOR is different and background check is different. That's it. Uh, so uh, I had another question. So for example, like I worked with a manager like uh, like uh, one year ago. So for like I, if I get, you know, if I get a recommendation from him also, will that, will that be a yes. good thing? Like Yes, that can be fine. Not more than okay. ideally... I would say not more than two years you should, uh, uh, because your skill sets change, right? So GMAT mm, says, right. I was supposed to be about five years. I would say your hello, uh, your people who know you in a professional setting as well for two years. That's of course not mm. official standpoint of ISE, but I advise people that you know if you want to get an LOR, if you're not in touch with somebody for two years, they may not know your current skill sets, and they may not be able to do justice to your LOR. So Go that's ahead. a thumb rule which I'll say not to uh, get it from somebody who. We know two years or three years back. Got it. So it is not recommended if I have two years of experience, so I should not get an LOR from my teacher or someone, right? It no, is not recommended. Not. Yeah, because yeah, so I should get it from time, a working. Let's probably move ahead yeah. with. That. I think I think you you yeah. have gotten to ask five questions as the other participants okay, might okay. be a bit jealous of you, right? Apologies. Uh, Thank you. 
Uh, Vasundhara, uh, let's go ahead with your question. Hi, Amit. Hi, Manas. I had one major question to ask. So basically, when it comes to the area of work experience, um, the, does like ISB look into the fact that oh, the company is well renowned, or there's a or there's another candidate who has worked in a startup? Or is it about the impact of the work that the person has done? It's about the impact and the progression that you show at work. Okay, oh, great. Yeah. Uh, Ashirita? Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, sir, I, um, I got, my profile got shortlisted for the second round of BILP. So that second round is due on 31st. August. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know it had an evaluator section. Now, who yeah. is an evaluator according to ISP? So I don't have any work experience. I'm in the final year of college. Yeah. So, so for you, the faculty can be the evaluator. Okay. Any faculty so when can I know very well, that is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one other question is when I choose a faculty, does it matter what the faculty's accreditations are? As in, it's not just what's mm -hmm. written in the LOR, but also their no, no, accreditations no. Does that matter. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. But Thank you. Uh, there'll be a column how they know you. So teach the faculty, okay. take a faculty who has taught you on who you have worked with on a project or some something. Yes, Don't just yes. randomly choose any faculty. Okay, understood, sir. And also, sir, um, I know this question has been asked, but for specifically for YLP, uh, is there a different range of GMAT scores that are accepted? Yes, uh, of course, because your work is on the lower side. So uh, yeah. you need a higher, uh, slightly higher GMAT. But I've seen people with 660 also get in through YLP. So okay. uh, 650, 660 seems to be the floor for YLP and anything higher up is uh, fine. But I'll not advise people to, you know, aim for 650 or 660 for YLP. Aim for median mm -hmm. score and then take it forward from there. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Khushi, uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Amit. I have uh, I have a couple of questions. So uh, while you're applying to ISB, is there any specific criteria for the campuses as well? So, I mean, if I'm looking to apply no. to the Mohali campus in particular. No, no, you can't apply to Mohali or Hyderabad. We follow hmm. one school to campus philosophy. You apply to ISB and you can give a preferred choice of the campus, whether Mohali or Hyderabad. And we'll hmm. try and you know meet your choice. But, you hmm. know, we want to ensure that there is parity among the two campuses in terms of the various parameters, men to women, uh, GMAT score averages, GRE averages, industry, uh, uh, equal representation of industry, equal representation of geography. So in that instance, some of you may not get a preferred campus. Understood. But there's no okay. difference in terms of the ex student experience, uh, whether mm -hmm. you're at Hyderabad or whether you're at Mohali. And so what's going to be the case with the placements? Yes, placements are also integrated. So uh, of late placements were happening online. But from this year onwards, we are moving to in-person placements and placement will happen at a common location, either Hyderabad or Mohali. And if they happen in Hyderabad, all Mohali students will come down to Hyderabad or take part in the placements and vice versa. And companies will not even know whether you're from Mohali campus or Hyderabad campus. For them, you're all ISB students, not ISB Mohali or ISB Hyderabad. So companies don't come to hire from Mohali or Hyderabad, they come to hire from ISB. So placements and admissions are integrated for uh, both the campuses. That's yeah, and, and one... companies are not even, I think, allowed to ask that question. Yeah, Which yeah. campus are you from? Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, and just one last question I have. So while, uh, so I currently have about two and a half years of work ex, and I was pursuing CFA while I was working. So now is that also going to be balanced out while I'm working in the sense that, I mean, is that also going to be seen as a way that, you know, I have a little lesser on the full-time side or CFA is no, one? No, no. Uh, CFA is... Uh, uh... You will do it uh, along. You can do it along with your work ex. So, if it's a certification, I would I would say or a qualification, yeah. right? So that's okay. perfectly fine. Your work ex will be counted as full time. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, we yes, uh, Yeah. Uh, thanks. I was actually asking if a particular person, you know, uh, does not make the cut in round one, can he apply back in round two or round mm -hmm. three? Mm -hmm. No. So it's a single application cycle. The rounds are okay. divided for the ease of processing of the applications. So in one year, you can apply only once. Oh, like okay, the IIMs where you can do that, but it's not for ISP. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Viraj, yes, over to you. And one reason for that is, you know, uh, uh, we don't foresee your profile changing drastically within a round, right? 
one year no, you no. still may come back with better parameters but we look at a holistic profile yeah. and within a one or two weeks or one or two months the profile is not going to drastically change that you can reapply again and yeah, sure. even Thank if you are applying reapplying the next year i think one crucial part that i as we look at is how your profile has changed and what improvements you have made over the last year got it uh Thanks. rohanika i think you can go ahead. no no we have uh, viraj first so yeah oh, achha, viraj, yeah, sorry. Chat, yeah let me just take it uh, thanks Priyansh. Hi, Amit. Uh, so just one question. Uh, post, uh, you know, my graduation, if you, you know, during COVID, if I've done any summer internship program with a company, is that counted as WorkEx? So was it uh, with along with your undergrad? No, no. After graduation. And was it paid? After... You, got a, you, you got paid yes, for it? Yes, it was paid. It was paid. But the duration it was uh, approximately four, four months, not long. Be because it was a summer internship work. program. Yeah, it will be considered as full time after graduation. Paid activity, full time. You went uh, morning nine to uh, five. You did a it project. Was, uh, since it was during COVID, it was uh, in remotely. Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. It will be counted as full time office for four okay. months. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks, Rohanika. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I had a similar question, but it's on the GRE. As the new GRE has gotten shorter, uh, you're getting penalized for, you know, the same amount of questions that you're getting wrong or you're getting penalized more, I'd say, because the number of questions are less. So uh, are we foreseeing like a shift towards the left or what would be the expected range in terms of score for, uh, given the new GRE? In, it depends on the people, uh, the pool of people who apply with GRE this year and what kind of scores they get. So it's not like we are, as I mentioned earlier, we don't look at absolute scores either for GMAT or GRE score percentiles. And if you see that there's a, there's a shift in the GRE score taking uh, uh, itself, then that will showcase in the selection also. Okay. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Okay, there is yeah. one question that's come on the yeah. chat. A couple of people wanted to know can the recommender receive the link without having a GMAT score so that they have sufficient time? Uh, yes, yes, they can. So the commander can receive the link uh, whenever you want to send it. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, all right, Tanushri, uh, over to you. Tanushri. Uh, yeah, my question is regarding the need based scholarship. So, what income proofs we need to submit for this? It could be anything your IT uh, declaration of your parents and yourselves uh, uh, or a declaration of your income certificate. Would be any of those documents. Like it will be uh, in hand salary, not CTC. So 18 it be, lakhs. But... It will be CTC. I mean, total salary, gross salary. Not CTC, gross salary. I wouldn't say gross. ESOPs and all the things, but gross salary with including taxes. Including taxes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ashish. Yeah, thank you. Please go ahead. Oh, yes. Hi. So I have a question around LORs. What is the ideal number of LORs that the application would look good? Only with? one. Only one. We're looking at only one LOR. There's space for oh, only that... one. Oh, there's just one. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, it's directly on the app. It's not like you need to submit letters from your recommenders. It's it's on the application portal. They will receive a link and they can just fill up the uh, form there. Uh, okay. Name okay. it. Nermit Chowdhury. Nermit, are you there? Yeah. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, so I wanted to know, like earlier, you had said that if I was, uh, if I'm doing my undergraduation and if I'm then working, that experience won't be counted. But if I no. have a letter from my college, like for the last three months when I have already completed my portion, and I only need to appear for my exams, if I have that permission letter. Since I had joined my work, will that be no. considered or no? That will not be considered. Uh, the cutoff date for the work calculation is last day of your exam. Once you give a last exam, from that day next day onwards, you can start working for the purpose of counting of work -ex. Okay, so again, it is last day of the exam, not when I get yes. my degree certificate. No, right? no, no. Sometimes so the graduation day can be postponed because uh, the the chancellor was not there available or something else. So last day of exam, not exactly the degree. yeah. Okay, so suppose I wrote, I, I completed my exams by 20th of March uh, last last to last year. And then I have two years of work experience as of 31st March 2025. Yes. That is okay, right? Even though I that have a okay. degree, it's May 2025. Okay. That should be okay. Yeah. 
okay sorry another question i want uh, had was if at a suppose median gmat score and i have good academics how much will the other parameters weigh in for my profile like uh, the work experience they will weigh in uh, now it's difficult to say how whether you need to compensate or whether uh, you will have uh, really good parameters but they will weigh all the parameters are uh, uh, have some uh, in uh, weightages in the process so if you have two or three good parameters good for you and if you have all parameters good then again chances scholarships increase uh, provided you have a good interview so it's very difficult to say individual cases that you know this is my parameter uh, because there are a lot of different variables that are, that are there of course so uh, can i have an idea of like what the other variables other than work ex uh, gmat score and the uh, academics you look for essays, volunteers letters of recommendation essays. activities yeah. essays are, have a, a, a good role to play so essays uh, your LOR has a weightage, your activities yes. have a weightage. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, Nirmit, like I think I like you've be, you got to be holistically, holistically ready in terms of an application. If you have a holistic readiness, they evaluate all parameters. There's not like there's an extra weightage to one parameter versus the other. You can broadly assume everything goes into a holistic profile at the evaluation stage. All right. Uh, Okay, we have in the interest yeah, of like time. Like I had mentioned, your essays the, are yeah. the your essays are the uh, your instruments to stand apart from the rest of the crowd, right? So everyone has a good profile, everyone has good academic background, work experience. So essays are your main weapon to stand out from the rest. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Just take these last few questions and then. Yeah, last three questions. I mean, yeah. I think yeah. we will yeah. end up. Yeah. 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 Pranit, please go ahead. Pranit, that is Pranit, I think seems to have an audio issue the second question? time. So let's, okay. let's move to Pratik. Yeah, yeah Pratik. Pratik. Can you... And if someone has any unanswered question after Shreya, please submit that form. I had pasted on the yes, chat. Yes, please submit form. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Priyas. Thank you, Manas. Hello, Amit. Uh, yeah, so I come from Mochi Navy background. And uh, we are, what we do is we sail for six months and then six months we wait and then we again go for six months mm -hmm. so how will this be counted because we're only paid for the time we're at sea yes, yes. so we paid I... for six months so yes yes uh, so for merchant navy people every year we get two three uh, 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 people who are in the class and for them the uh, method for calculation of work experience is different there's a formula we, we use to calculate the work experience i don't remember the formula right away but it's different and we use two weightage to your work experience because we understand the uh, kind of uh, you know work profile that you have so do one thing, you can write to pgp at isb.edu and ask for, uh, uh, show, I mean, give your parameters and they'll give you back whether you're eligible or not. They'll write back to you. So for Merchant Navy, the criteria is slightly different and that formula is there. So feel free to write to us and we'll uh, get back to you on that. Okay, so while uh, applying for my application, I mm -hmm. can't use the entire year. If I've sailed for six months and then we wait for no, six no, months. There is a formula which we use, there's a formula which we use okay. for uh, your work experience. And we will uh, tell you exactly what it is if you write to PGP at ISB or because I don't have that uh, uh, accurate info right now. I don't want to say something which, you know, may not be accurate right now. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And we'll take yeah. one last Shreya. question from Shreya. Yeah. Shreya. And people are so saying before... that they are not able to submit the form. Let me just, I'll just quickly check that and get back to you. Yes, if you're not able to submit the form, sorry, Shreya, I'll just hold off a second. Yeah. If you're not able to submit the form, if we haven't heard you, we haven't taken your question, uh, I think, you know, our phone number is there on the website. Happy to connect you to Manas and Amit and, you know, get your responses back to you guys. Please make sure that, you know, if you have any specific questions about your profile, happy to address them at a later stage. Uh, I think for today, we're going to wrap it up after Shreya's, Shreya's question. And uh, any other follow-up questions will be taken up tomorrow or on Monday by my team. All right. So yeah, with that, Shreya, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Prayash. Thank you, Manas. And hi, Amit. Uh, so hi. my question is simple. I apply for if, for round one uh, and then I apply for round two. The only difference is I am, I've given my GMAT during the round two. So is that allowed or not for this year? No, no, it's not allowed. So, uh, so what you need to do is whether you apply in round one or round two, make sure that you have the best parameters ready. Uh, make sure your GMAT is as the best one that you can get and then apply. It's fine if you apply in round two or round three, also the chances of getting in are uh, even, 
there is no bias against you in any of the rounds. But once you apply in any round, then you can only apply next year. Because essentially, it's an admission cycle that we have. And the rounds are only for meant for ease of application processing. We don't want to, you know, uh, make somebody who applies in June wait till March to re receive the results for their applications. Hence, we have the rounds in place. But essentially, it's a single application cycle. All right. Thank you so much, Amit. Sure. All right. Thank uh, you. Sure. Uh, Pay sorry to jump into that, but uh, can can you send the recording of this session to me later? Is that a possibility? Uh, yeah, we'll be posting it uh, on our YouTube channel, Manan. Uh, we'll try to yeah. send the link out to everybody at that point. Okay. Because right. my bit of question. Uh, any other I think your voice follow broke questions? Off, yeah. I, I just updated uh, the permission on the form. You guys can check. I yeah. think it's, now you can submit it. All right. Thank yeah, you it's working, for Manas. Joining. Thank you, Amit, for the lovely session. You know, I'm guessing there were a lot of things even for us that were new, specifically questions like merchant navy backgrounds, and there's a calculation and a formula for that, or uh, you know, any of the other parameters that you spoke about. The new essays, the new essays definitely have created a little bit of uh, you know anxiety. I would say generally, anyways. Uh, aspirants are anxious about ISB and that's why they want to get a second opinion on their essays, on their profiles, on their uh, perspectives. But again, I think you gave a lot of clarity on what you, the team at ISB will be looking for when they submit their application. And uh, for all the people who stayed back till now, thank you once again for uh, providing Amit with an opportunity to get all your questions addressed. We look forward to staying in touch. And if you have any further questions, Lilac Bud's team, including Manas heading it, will all be available to address any further queries that you have. All right. The, with that, it's a yep. wrap for today. Uh, everybody, uh, have a great evening. Bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you, much. Amit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, all right. Bye everyone. All the best. Thank you. Yeah. All the best.